In this episode of It Came From My Side of the Laundry, we're going to take a trip to Cybertron and I'm going to do a quick review of something that was really special that me and my family went to. So stick around. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. This week we're going to take a trip to Cybertron with some G1 Transformers and we went to Marvel Universe Live. So I want to give a quick review of that. But first, let's head to Cybertron. In this installment of Straight from Cybertron, we're going to take a look at a couple Generation 1s that I have in my collection. Unfortunately, nowadays, I don't have that many. Uh, for, for starters, I never had that many Transformers growing up, and the ones I did have suffered a lot of damage. But... Some of them are still intact, and I want to show them to you. And this was by accident. I hope I don't look like the dude that shows up to the concert with that band's t-shirt on. But anyway, let's take a look at a couple of siblings first. We have Top Spin. Which, what I find great about this one, figure, vehicle, and his brother, Twin Twist, love those augers on there, like you can just imagine him burrowing underground and popping up, but on them, they say, Takara, 1980, and it has Japanese writing. I don't know if that'll come through, but this could just be me not knowing that much, but I don't think there were that many of the Generation 1s that had that stamp on them. So I, I think they're great just for that, but what made them the famous was there quick transformations let's see if I can do this here without having anything to uh, roll on okay either he's suffering from stage fright or just from age there we go if I remember correctly, these dudes came with guns. I think they were silver. But there's Twin Twist. And of course, you have the awesome heat transfer logo here. Oh, it's peeling up a little bit. He's losing his oil stickers left and right. They probably are just losing their uh, tackiness over the years. But there's him. Now top spin. There we go. And the thing I loved about him was the wings, that you could pretend that he was flying when he was in his robot form. Or even when he's in his, like, Cybertronian car form here. His stickers are holding up a little bit better than his brother's. There we go. I don't know what the reason is for that, but... Here they are next to each other. Sorry. 
but I had an extra one of him, and I gave him to my son, and, I mean, he loves it. He doesn't pop up like how he should when you pull him back. He kind of stumbles and falls over, but that's probably from age. Probably the uh, gears or whatever aren't tight like they were anymore to give it that snap to jump up to its feet, because that's what they were advertised to do, and they did when they came out. And it was awesome. It was cutting edge for the time in 1984 when these came out. I believe 84. Um, but they don't function the same anymore. I mean, just like all of us at this age. But we still continue the good fight. Now, the next ones are part of a trio. But I only have two of them, and I wish I had the third. He's the more popular, I think, with how he looks. But we'll start here. We have Bomb Blast, the Insecticon. And he's, that's a little loose over the years. And with it being Micromasters... He has a cockpit there for a little dude to sit in. And I wanted to, and I forgot to, I'll have to do it another day, get one of my son's more recent uh, headmaster, target master, whatever they're calling themselves, and see if he actually fit in there, because that would be pretty cool. But let's transform them here. One thing about the Insecticons, I mean, they... Their portrayal in the cartoon is legendary. Their creepy voices, how they ate other metal and would attack the Autobots and try to eat them. I mean, that's one thing that my son, when we go out and he looks out the window and pretends it's the Insecticons are eating cars and buildings. So, I mean, they have a long-lasting impression here he is transformed i mean it's a very sturdy figure sturdy transformation and it's just a simple couple clicks and turns but i mean he looks great he looks awesome the colors um in our favorite decepticons i had to pick the insect or favorite Decepticons, I had to pick the Insecticons because their colors alone, I mean, the purples and the yellows and blacks, it's just neat, and they complement each other so wonderfully, and it gives them such a unique look. But there he is. Now, Shrapnel, which nowadays they call him Scrapnel, <clears throat> which I find odd. Here he is, like a stag beetle or something. See his wheel on wheels a little loose. Again, with the cockpit. His stickers have held up a little bit better than bomb blasts, but let's transform them. One thing I like about him is I'll show you once I transform him. Let's see here, move the arms out of the way. Pull his legs down, twist the waist. And boom. And just like that, he's transformed. But the one thing I really dig is the blasters under his arms. It's things like that that you don't need the accessories because they're already there. Your imagination can can imagine him blasting with these and diving around. And he has these big pinchers to grab people. And they have blasters at the end. And the cartoon showed that a lot where he would, you know, be like their long range shooter. But unfortunately, I don't have kickback. And I mean, I think. That, this is just my perception that he's probably the most popular because of his aesthetic with the antenna and the wings. But, I mean, 
he's one that I would love to have in my collection. Even the newer versions of them are great. All of them were made great. I mean, they didn't really change them that much because they're just classic looking. They're simple and sturdy, like I said. Great colors. I mean, very neat. But anyway, that was just a look at a few generation ones that I have. Um, pull out a couple more next time, but we're going to do a quick review next, but until then, take a look at this commercial. The Transformers, more than meets the eye, Autobots plays their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons, the Transformers, more than meets the eye, the Transformers, robots in disguise. The Transformers from Hasbro. Welcome back. And I kind of like breaking things up and I feel bad with doing another quick review. But this was something that was very special that me and my family did. And we went to Marvel Universe Live. And when I brought it up to a couple people, no one knows what it is. And just in layman's terms, it's Marvel's answer to the Ice Capades. Um, we actually went to Disney on Ice a month ago, but then this past weekend we went to Marvel Universe Live. And they're vastly different. Of course, one's aimed at the girl demographic and the other's at the boy demographic. But I can say my son and daughter both loved it equally. My wife and I both loved it equally. And it was very fun. It's a weird, before I get into the specific, specifics of it, blah, blah, blah. It is a weird amalgam of the Marvel comic book universe and the cinematic universe. And you have the characters of all the Guardians of the Galaxy, which Groot is awesome. It's a dude on stilts walking around. Very big and imposing. Um, the dude or lady, whomever, that's in the costume for Rocket, very shorter, shorter than everybody else. But the costume's cool because the mouth actually would move. Um, Jetpack on the back, and, you know, there was a lot of wire work with flying and a lot of pyro going off when... Any of the Guardians would use their blasters or guns or anything. Um, the only thing that was kind of weird was, and I guess it helps that you could put any actor in it, but Drax was like a big bulky suit with a mask on. So I guess that saves on the makeup and, you know, having to find somebody that would fit the physical bill of it. Um, so you had the Guardians, then you have the Avengers, which were just... Black Widow, Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man was there. He was awesome seeing someone do the wire work and spin around and hang upside down in the classic feet on the web and hanging upside down, going back and forth, you know, dozens of feet up in the air. I mean, these people have nerves of steel um, because all of their behind the scenes stuff to how they would come in well most of the time was done with um scaffolding at the top of the arena which was i mean that's pretty high up so kudos to those people for have you know for having the guts to do that um but you had them i feel like i'm missing some black panther of course he was cool he did a lot of neat Martial arts stuff, rolls and flips and kicks. And Doctor Strange um, had some neat effects with that. And he's kind of like the narrator slash um, person that puts everything together. Um, you also have, 
Loki as the villain and the aliens from the first the Chiari or whatever they're called from the first Avengers movie. Um, and Nebula is also one of the villains. And it's a neat way how they bring everyone together with one cohesive storyline. But the things that surprised me, not a spoiler uh, at all, but Iron Fist is in it. And he's awesome in his classic costume, of course. And it looked great. You know, it's one of those things where and rest in peace to the TV show. But it's like if they can do this on a probably a nickel and dime, why can't they do it on the show? It looked great. Even I mean, he had a huge like prosthetic hand over his own and it glowed and it looked great. Uh, The mask looked great. The green costume looked great. Um, so that was a surprise in the show. And also that they traveled to the Savage Land, which was, I think they added different locales so they could do different entertainment, uh, pieces with it. It's not just combat and explosions and pyro, but like when they go to, uh, Kung Ooh, bad on me. Kung Lao or wherever uh, Iron Fist is from. Ooh, forgive me for that, for forgetting. They had neat Chinese dragon dancing. They had the uh, silk, uh, the ladies up on the silk scarves spinning around and doing acrobatics. And great music, you know, uh, like Chinese music to it. So it was kind of like a, a Chinese New Year kind of celebration. And then when they went to the Savage Land, it was neat. It was a lot of, like, uh, like the Savage Land cavemen. They were doing, like, a taiko drum kind of thing. And uh, fire dancing. And, you know, they had cool fire dance and spinning flame things. And a lot of cool fire stuff. Uh, like Polynesian kind of flair to it. So that was really neat. So it was fun, you know, that's the one thing, even with the Disney on ice that we went to, how they, with each character, each like princess or movie that they went to in it, they encapsulated something from the country they were from or their story to make it like a real show. Um, So, I mean, kudos to the Disney banner for that. Um, but anyway, it was fun. It was, the kids were excited. They had a great time. I regret not getting a t-shirt there because unlike a lot of these kids centric things, they actually had an adult section at their souvenir stand. I mean, you pay a pretty penny, but it was neat, um, to see that. Um, of course, the kids, it's like, hey, do you want something? And you try to egg them onto something. They're like, we just want popcorn. It's like, oh, don't you want this cool stuff? But kids are kids. They'll be dorks soon enough. But anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming by. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe. Leave a comment. If you saw the Marvel Universe live, tell me what you thought. Um, but until next time, my name's Rob. This has been It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. Keep being rad, stay dorky, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this episode presented by My Side of the Laundry Room. Please check out some of these other recommended videos, and if you enjoyed what you've watched, please hit the subscribe button. You can also follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, and read up on My Side of the Laundry Room at our blog. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep being rad and stay dorky.